As you can see, the title is quite controversial. The Muslims are going to be upset, and I'm going to qualify. I'm not saying Muslims knowingly worship the false god Baal, Baal. If you're familiar with the Old Testament, you will note that the main competitor for the worship and allegiance of the Israelites was the false god Baal, Baal. All throughout the Old Testament, you'll find God chastening, disciplining, rebuking, punishing, even exiling his people for their habitual habit of turning to the false god Baal. That's all throughout the Old Testament. The name Baal also pops up in the New Testament under the name Belzebub. If you read Mark 3, 22, all the way 30, the Jews accused Jesus of casting out demons by Belzebub, the prince of demons. Belzebub, Belzebub, or Belzebul. Baal, that's the word Baal, Zebub, Zebul, means Lord of the flies, Lord of the house. In fact, Baal is simply Satan's disguise. Because if you go with what the Jews said in Mark 3, Belzebub is the prince of demons. But the prince of demons would be Satan. So here, if the Jews are right and Jesus didn't correct them, that means Belzebub, Baal, is simply another name of Satan. Because there's only one ruler of demons, Satan. He rules the kingdom of darkness. All evil spirits are subject to him. If that's true, then that means if I establish tonight by the sources, Muslim sources and non-Muslim sources, if I establish Allah is simply another form, another name for Baal, and Islam is simply another form of Baal worship, then that actually further confirms Islam is the origin of the devil, it's Satan's religion that Satan inspired through Muhammad to be the competitor against Judaism and Christianity. And that would make sense, right? Because all throughout Old Testament history, the chief competitor to Yahweh, Yahovah, was Baal. Right now, as we speak, the chief competitor is Islam. You understand why it's important? So here are the three facts I want to establish. Facts that either the sources themselves come out and say, or facts that are derived from what these sources are saying. Okay, here are the three facts. And this is all in my articles. Fact number one. Hubal was the chief deity, the chief god of Mecca and of the shrine, the Kaaba. That's the first fact. Fact number two, Hubal was actually Baal. Hubal, and the Muslim sources will testify, was actually the Arabic name for Baal. That's the second fact. The third fact, the sources don't come out and say it, but that's the logical, necessary inference. Hubal was Allah, Allah was Hubal. If you actually read, quote-unquote, between the lines, you're going to see, Hubal was Allah, Allah was Hubal. So are you now ready to dig in? Okay, ready? Make sure you click on those links to the articles and save them. One thing I want to share. I want to give you a little background on the pagan religion in Mecca. Mecca, according to the Muslim sources, is the place where Muhammad was born. He belonged to the Quraysh tribe. And according to the Muslim sources, the Meccans were into astral worship. The Arabs before Muhammad and during the time of Muhammad were into astral worship where they worshiped the sun and moon and five planets because they thought there were only five planets. Now, in many cultures, the sun was the male deity and the moon was the female deity. Not in Arabia. The moon was the male deity and the sun was the female deity. And the sun was the consort, the wife of the moon. If I'm not confusing you, let me just read what Abdullah Yusuf Ali says. I can't read all of it. This is a Muslim whose Quran translation was widely circulated and distributed in the 20th century. It will be noticed that the sun and the moon and the five planets got identified, each with a living deity, god or goddess, with characteristics and qualities of its own. Did you catch what he just said? The Arabs in Mecca worship the sun and moon and five planets as seven gods and goddesses. You're going to see the relevance in a minute. Now let me read the rest of it. Let me skip and let me get to the relevant part. He goes, and the Arabic word for the moon, Hamar, is of the masculine gender. And on the, on the other hand, the Arabic word for the sun, Shams, is of the feminine gender. The pagan Arabs evidently looked upon the sun as a goddess and the moon as a god. Ah, so the Arabs in Mecca, they viewed the moon as the male god and the sun as the female god, the goddess. Ah, that's going to be important. 
the moon is the male deity okay because it's the planet associated with the chief god of the pantheon the chief god worshipped by the air pagans and a host of gods and goddesses and the chief god is male so the moon that's a masculine now so it's associated with the male deity who's the chief but hold on the chief deity is supposed to be allah that means you just established that for the pagans for the pagans allah was the moon god oh my goodness you want me there and the sources i'm going to quote will say Hubal was the chief god, and Hubal was the moon god. And Hubal is actually the idol Baal. And I'm now going to show it to you. Let's begin. Okay, this comes from God's Goddesses and Mythology, volume 11, page 137. Hubal, chief god of the Kaaba, a martial and auricular deity, a moon god. What was Hubal? A moon god. Oh my goodness. Are you seeing it? Okay, let's read another one. A pre-Islamic deity represented by an idol in Kaaba that was destroyed by Muhammad when he conquered Mecca in 630. Patron of the Quraysh. Remember, Muhammad's tribe is the Quraysh tribe. So who was the chief god of the Quraysh? Hubal. What tribe was Muhammad born? Born into? Born from? Quraysh. So who was the chief god of Muhammad's family, of Muhammad's tribe, of Muhammad? Hubal. Who is Hubal? Baal. Muhammad was born in Baal worship. Let me read some more. It's all in the article. This comes from Cyril Glasse, and this comes from the New Encyclopedia of Islam. Hubal, an idol, the god of the moon. <whistles> Centuries before Islam, pay attention to this name. Centuries before Islam, Amr ibn Luhay, a chief of the tribe of Jurhum who dwelt in Mecca, before the coming of the Quraysh tribe, brought the idol to the city from Syria. Wow. I'm going, we're going to revisit that. But let me finish it. It was set up in the Kaaba and became the principal idol of the pagan Meccans. Folks, do you understand the implication of what we just read? Hubal was an idol from Syria. The chief god in Syria among the pagans was Baal. Baal. Baal was the god that was worshipped by the Syrians before the time of Muhammad. If this Arab, Amr, brought the idol from Syria, what was he bringing to the Kaaba? The idol of Baal, Baal. So he brought the idol Baal from Syria, and that's why it's called Hubal. And notice Hubal became the chief god of the Kaaba of Mecca. So you understand what the sources just admit? Hubal is the god of the moon. He's the moon god. Hubal was the god of the Kaaba, the god of Mecca, the chief god. Hubal was the idol from Syria. These three facts are admitted explicitly by the sources. So now let's break it down. If Hubal is from Syria and the chief god worshipped in Syria is Baal, we just established Hubal is Baal, Baal, Baal. That means Baal was the chief god of Mecca, the chief god of the Kaaba, and Baal was then seen to be the moon god, the god of the moon. You with me there? Here's another one. Khuza'a thus shared the guilt of Jurhum. They're also to blame in other respects. Now, here's what's beautiful. A chieftain of theirs, on his way back from a journey to Syria, coming back from Syria, asked the Moabites, oh my goodness, the Moabites, to give him one of their idols. They gave him Hubal, which he brought back to the sanctuary, setting it up within the Kaaba, and it became the chief idol of Mecca. Who gave him the idol? The Moabites. Who are the Moabites? The descendants of Lot. The Moabites in Syria, whom the Old Testament says, worship Baal. This is a Muslim admitting this. Oh my goodness. Are you catching it? Let's read some other sources. This comes from John Moulson Arnold. Notice what he says here. The name Hubal remains a mystery. The opinion... That is that it is synonymous with the Babylonian and Syrian Baal or Bel is supported by the testimony of the Arab authorities. Oh my goodness. Are you guys getting blown away here? Folks, you're reading it for yourselves. What more evidence do you need 
that the pagan Arabs were Baal worshippers. Baal was their chief god, the god of the Kaaba. But the Muslims tell me the Kaaba was built for Allah. Wait, if the Kaaba is Baal shrine and the Kaaba is Allah shrine and you can't have more than one god of the shrine, that means Baal is Allah, Allah is Baal. Let me repeat that again. Here is Satan's mastermind. He disassociated Allah from Hubal through Muhammad and the connection with, with Hubal was lost in order to deceive people into thinking Allah is the God of Abraham and not simply the name of Baal. Because Satan worked through Muhammad as his prophet to dissociate Hubal from Allah, making it seem they're not the same in order to deceive 1.7 billion people from not realizing they're worshipping Baal under the guise of Islam. That's the satanic mastermind. Because if he still called them Hubal, hold on, Hubal was the idol of the Moabites that was imported from Jordan and Syria. And their idol was Baal. Are you saying Allah is Baal, the false god, the competitor to Jehovah, another name of Satan? You see the mastermind? You see the brilliance of Satan in raising up Muhammad, his son, the son of Satan, who's now crushed under the feet of Jesus?